So now we have <clears throat> the L7 image within our ArcGIS Pro map. So that looks just like this. So what we're going to do next is the note steps two, th three, four, five, six, seven, So going back to the remote sensing um, L7 image that we have, we're going to click on the imagery tab. In the imagery tab, there are classification tools, and we want to open the training samples manager. And I'm just going to undock it over here. So it can be floating for now, so it's easier to see. So by default, the training sample manager has two panes, a upper pane and a lower pane down here. The upper pane contains a schema or the names of the information classes and the title of the schema. So in this case, we have the title being by default NLCD 2011. And then we have the information class water developed barren forest. These have nothing in them right now. And we're going to open up by clicking on the Open Classification Schema button. And we're going to go to our Lecture 9 folder, or Lecture 8 folder, I should say. And mine's here. I have it called Lecture 8B. And I'm going to open up Ottawa ECS. So that's the classification schema for what we want to do, which is forest and non-forest. Later you'll see how to make this from scratch. Next, in the Lecture 8 folder, Remote Sensing, Imagery, we have a layer, which is a vector layer called L7 2001-0825 training. This contains a series of training data sets or training polygons that I've created for this example. Now, back in the image classification pane, in the lower pane, this is where we can load up a feature class that contains polygons for each information class in the schema, if one exists. And to do that, I click on my load training samples. I navigate to my lecture 8B folder. And then I go to remote sensing, imagery, and I choose L7 2001-0825 training. And I click OK. And you'll see it immediately puts in green and red. Green ones are forest examples, and red ones are non-forest examples. Up in the schema, the colors are slightly different. Forest is still green, which is good, but non-forest is, um, the color here is tan. So I'm just going to change that to red by editing the properties of that second information class by right clicking on non-forest edit properties and color red. In here you also see that the name is non-forest which we know because we just clicked on it and the value is 2 so the pixel value that we're giving to the non-forest polygons is a value 2. And that will become the pixel value for non-forest. So I can just click OK here. Likewise forest, oops, I didn't want to do that. I just want to put that back up there. I don't want it to be a subclass. There we go. That was just an accident. Don't worry about what happened there. Um, and I want forest. I want forest up first. Uh, 
There we go. So non-forest. Now double click on forest, or I should say right click and say edit properties, and you'll see it says forest value one. So the pixel value for forest will be one and the color is green. Now what we're very interested in seeing right now is that for machine learning purposes we want to have an equal amount, an approximately equal amount of pixels in each training set of polygons. So for forest we have 56 percent of the pixels of the total pixels that are being used for training or will be used for training and creating the signature file 56 percent of those are in forest and 43 percent are in non-forest so we have an option then we want to equal these out to be approximately 50 50 we may not get exactly 50 50 and that's okay but as long as they're a bit closer than this so the easiest way here would be to add perhaps an additional non-forest or two polygons to the training data set. So to do that, I click on in the information class half pane, non-forest. Then once I've clicked on non-forest, you'll see tools up here. You might see four tools or you might just see the three I see. If you see four, click on the second one, which is just polygon. Once you click on polygon and then you bring your mouse over top of your remotely sensed image, you'll see a crosshairs. And so it's looking for examples of non-forest. So I'm going to zoom in down here, for example, where there's some non-forest. And I'm just going to click once and that makes one part of the polygon, click two, click three, and then double click to end the polygon. And watch the pixel percent in the lower pane of the image classification pane. So we have now 42% plus 3%, so that's 46.457, 46 46.57 now versus 54.2. So as we add more non-forest examples, all we need to do is watch this one up here, which is forest. We just keep an eye on it till it comes closer to 50. So here's another non-forest bit. So I'll just make another polygon there. And it's down to 51.09 now for forest. Um, I could choose this area here, and that might be good enough. Double click, 50.04. So that's good. Forest is now 50%, and that means non-forest will be just slightly lower than 50%, 49.96. And that means we now want to go back to our training samples here in the lower pane and then select all the forest ones. You may need to expand your window if there's a lot of them. Maybe yours were smaller. Once we select all the non-forest, then we're going to click on this collapse button, like this. And you'll see that that collapses all the non-forest into a single feature set with eight polygons and those eight polygon polygons have 49.96 percent of the total pixels for training and forest has 50.04 percent and that's fine that's very close to 50 50. so now let's save our training data set so to save it i'm going to click on you can either click save but don't click on save as and then go into your imagery geo database and click on the data that says l7 2001 training 2020 that's the data set um well actually you won't have that data set 
So you just have to add the 2020 after the training. So you add a data set called that, which is a feature class. So it's the same as L705 training. You can click on that and then at the bottom of the window uh, in the name you can type 2020 and click save. And then that saves it the training data set that has both 50% uh, forest and 50% non-forest. And that's what's important. And at this point, we can just close the image classification window. Um, and it may say tra the training samples have been modified, but have not been saved. Cl click yes to save the modifications. Then bring in your training 2020 one from the map. So L7 2001-08-25 training 2020 and put it on top, make sure, so you can see it. And I'm gonna zoom out a bit so I can see my whole image. I might right click on that and say zoom to layer. So now I'm gonna symbolize my training data according to forest and non-forest colors that we chose because by default it won't be symbolized that way. Now to know it, to know the class or the what, we're, what field we'll use to symbolize, I'm gonna right click on my new L7 2001-08-25 training 2020 and I'm going to say okay let's look at the attribute table because that's where everything was saved. So in the attribute table we have class code this is automatically made by the training samples manager when we save things. We have code 1 and code 2. Code 1 corresponds to forest and it has a pixel value or class value of 1. And then the count over here is how many pixels were in it, 3,269. Then we have code 2 in the second row. So that's all those features on the map. These are non-forest examples, pixel value 2. And there's 3,264 pixels in there. And you see that's just a, a different way of looking at the percentage wise, right? So we know that's 50.04% and that's 49.96% um, for the non-forest. So now first I'm going to click on my map tab, make sure I have nothing selected before, before doing anything further, and I'll just close the training 2020 attribute table. So here we have the L7 Training 2020. I'll click on the Appearance tab, Symbology, Unique Values. Then I will choose Class Name, Forest, Non-Forest. And I'll click on the All Other Values and remove them. You may only see all other values here. And if you see just all other values, click on the Add All Values button, like that. And then for forest and non-forest, that's good. I'll quickly change the colors over in the Attributes pane by right-clicking on forest and choosing red. And not, or I should say forest, we wanted green, so I'll choose a nice bright green. And non-forest, red. Now this is only for aesthetics. This has no effect on any actual processing. It's just to remind us visually where our forest examples are versus our non-forest examples. So the next thing we need to assess now that we have this training data oops, is we need to look at a means by which we can figure out which bands of the Landsat 7, 1 to 6, are good for, would be best for um, using in a machine learning classifier so that there we have good separability within those particular bands, as I discussed earlier. So to do that, I'm going to um, click over here, right click on my L7 2001-08-25 raster layer or image and I'll say create chart 
and it will be a chart type called a spectral profile. And this opens up the spectral profile chart. And yours may be docked, your, your, um, the pane for chart properties may be docked over here in your, where are your, where your, all the other things are docked like that. If you don't see that show up, just click on the properties button in the spectral profile graph window like that. And that will open up the the chart properties dialog. So what we want to do here is I'm just going to undock mine and you may want to do that too just so you can expand it horizontally to see all of the tools in the little toolbar of the spectral profile graph. I'll just move it out of the way a bit here too. So we want to look at the average to start with so we'll choose mean line as the plot type, the average of all the pixels in each class, forest and non-forest. So we do that by choosing a plot type mean line, then clicking on the tool within the chart properties pane called feature selector. And I'm going to start by clicking on any of the green polygons. and that will open up this. This line here shows us the average pixel value in each band for forest pixels. So for example here the average is around 56 or 57. So in band 1 which always starts at the right hand side, band 1 and then band 2 is where you see a little kink here. Band 3 is this larger kink. Band 4 is over here. Band 5 is the next one. And band 6 is down here. Because our, um, our data or our image, this Landsat image, has metadata which tells ArcGIS not just the band names but what the range of... Um, the range of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is part of each band, it shows wavelength on the x-axis here. So I have that one. We know that's forest. So I'm just going to click on the symbol over here where it's um, classified that as blue, and I'm going to change it to green. So that green line will remind me that that's forest. Maybe I'll make it a bit of a darker green on the graph here, like so. Then I click back on my select feature selector tool and I click on any of the red polygons which are non-forest. And it puts a blue line. I know that's non-forest and we've been using red for that so I'm going to click on profile 2 and change it to red. And I'll just bring my spectral profile graph out here so we can have a look at it. So this now shows the spectral, the average spectral response in each of the bands for both forest, which is the green line, and non-forest, which is the red line. And we can see there's separation between them and all the bands for the average values, in that the average value of the red or um, green line don't cross anywhere. So there's no crossing of any of the two lines anywhere. And the separation is the vertical separation for each band. Like we see here. Now um, band 1 and maybe band uh, 2, 3, band 4, there seems that band 4 or band 1, the lines are quite close together. So let's look at a different plot type. We don't have to change anything. We just go back to our chart properties and we'll look at a box and whisker diagram. So instead of plot mean line, I'm just going to change that to boxes. Now this information graph 
shows us again red and green, red meaning non-forest and green meaning forest, and this time it lists it by bands. So in band one, we see that the box of the green, so the box area, which is the 75th and 25th and 75th percentile of the histogram for, or the distributional histogram for the response of forest in band one, has no overlap with the 25th and 75th percentile of non-forest in band one. So that would lead us to believe there's separability here. Likewise, there's, a, there's separability in band two between forest and non-forest. Band three is good. Band four, however, which is the near infrared band, we see there is overlap in the, um, between the 50th percentile and the 75th percentile and the 25th and maybe approximately uh, probably 35th percentile of non-forest right there. So there's overlap in the boxes. So this may confuse our machine classifier because they're not necessarily going to be easily separable in band four. Band five, good separability as band six. So by examining this, it's just like examining the histograms. These are visual representations of the histograms. We have the minimum and maximum observed values, which are the whiskers, and then we have our 25th and 75th percentiles of the distribution. So you can see if we, we're just looking at the whiskers, well, the whiskers between all of these overlap in some way. The most overlap is going to be in band four where the boxes overlap. These whiskers are the extreme values. Or, and so we're not overly concerned with a few values that might be extreme that overlap. They're not gonna be as confusing to the classifier. So we're going to use band one, two, three, five, and six in our um, analysis when we create our um, uh, signature file, which will be used in the classification. So I can close this now that I've done my assessment of separability. And we'll move on to the signature file. So we just completed step 22. We've examined our signature file. We found that band one, two, three, five, and six had good separability, whereas the near infrared band did not in Landsat 7. So we want to use the good bands, the ones that had good separability, for assessing our um, or creating our signature file. So we're going to create a signature file and the order of bands is important. So we need to put the bands in the same order as we will use them in the classifier later on that is using the signature file. So we always go in band order, one, two, three, five, six. No, there's no four because band four did not have good separability. And we're going to call our output this right here, L7-2001-0825-GSG. GSG for a signature file. So back in ArcGIS Pro, I'm going to go to my Geoprocessing tab. And in the Geoprocessing pane, I'm just going to type um, Create Signature. And it will start to show the Create Signatures in Spatial Analyst. So we find that create signature file tool here in spatial analyst tools, multivariate, and create signatures. So I click on it. Now, to make this easy, I want to undock my geoprocessing tab so I can see it beside my catalog tab. Then, I'm going to go into the L7-2001-0825 remotely sensed image, and then I can see bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I'll select band 1, 
hold my control button down, band 2, band 3, band 5, and band 6 in that selection order. Then I'll drag all those to the input raster bands in the Create Signatures tool. And it puts them in order, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, excluding band 4. And then, what is my input raster or feature sample data? That's going to be my training 2020. So I'm going to drag that into there. Finally, sample field, class code. I'll use class name, forest, non-forest. The output signature file, I'm going to go into my remote sensing folder and I'm going to call it L7 2001 0825 GSG. So I'm calling it that file right there. And I'll click Save. And I'll overwrite the existing one. And ensure that you have compute covariance matrices checked. So it looks just like this. And then I click Run. And it'll just take a few seconds for it to create that signature file. While that's happening, just go back over to where we were and have a look at what we'll do next. So it says, create signatures file completed. And so I'll just move that up over here, maybe make it a bit smaller so it's not too much in the way, because I'll still need this one more time to be undocked for the next step. So if I go back to my toolbox here, and in the multivariate, I have multi or maximum likelihood classifier. So that's a type of machine learning classifier that's commonly used for pixel-based image classification. So I'll double click on that. And notice again, the first thing is input raster bands. These must be in the same order and same number as in the signature file we just created. So again, I'll go back to imagery, scroll down. There's my image, L7 2001 I expand it. And again, in the same order, control click on band one, two, three, skip four, click on five, six, release my finger from the control button. Now I drag those into the input raster bands. Now I have one, two, three, five, and six. That will correspond to my signature file that I just created, so I now have to open up my signature file. So I'll click on Browse. I'll go to my remote sensing folder where I saved it, and I called it this, L7 2001 0825 GSG, Spatial Analyst Signature File, and I click OK. Now here, because we had an equal amount of um, pixels in each band, we leave the a priori probability weighting to equal. And we don't have to output anything else. We could choose to output a confidence raster, is it? Um, and that can be interesting to look at. So let's do that. We'll, st we'll put that right in the same remote sensing folder. So imagery, and I'll call it L7, L7, O, uh, L7, 2001, 08, 25, uncertainty. And I'll just click Save. So once I have that ready to go, I will run this and I will have, it will, the output will be a thematic layer of forest and non-forest.
I'm going to turn off the uncertainty one here. And I'll turn off those right there. So having a look at this in my, in, a, in my table of contents, in the contents pane, I'm going to change forest again to green. So I'll right click on it. So it's green. And non-forest, I'll change back to red, like so. So now we have a potential map of forest and non-forested area in 2001 based on a Landsat 7 ETM Plus multispectral image. Uh, the uncertainty layer looks like this. where um, higher levels, higher values here, mean more uncertainty, and lower values mean less uncertainty. So it's just a relative scale there. If we overlay or just turn on our training polygons, well, we should have fairly good correspondence there in that things that we picked as forest versus non-forest are tending to line up. So the green polygons are in green forested areas. But even in some of those green forested areas, there will be some things classified as non-forest, like you see here. These are probably individual farmer's fields. If we were to turn all that off and look back at the original image, it's hard to tell. You don't really see much in there visually. So that could just be examples of um, incorrectly classified pixels, which is common. So that is our classified layer. It's now a thematic layer.